Hey guys, we're right here in front of the Euclid Avenue Cleveland Foot and Ankle Clinic, and Maria is always talking about my feet because of my days playing football. <laughs> but today we're here for Maria's feet. Wait a minute, Josh. Do we need to tell everyone that I have bunions? Yes. And you know I get nervous to go to the doctor, but so I guess since we're here, I might as well tackle it, right? Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, now you guys, we are inside the doctor's office with Dr. Dwayne Aird. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Doctor? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We've heard so much about you. You've Great come things. highly recommended. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? I am a full-time faculty member at Kent State University, and I teach foot and ankle surgery. Right. And I heard you have foot and ankle problems. Um, I I also, put me on, why you gotta put me on? Who told you that? That's, I'm just that's coming the, here. That's, I am just a regular that's the civilian. That I've heard. Aww. She has, she has not problems. I guess she, she has a, a they're deep They're problems. Deep they're problems. My father, um, he has bunions, and so I always attribute to me having bunions is just heredity, but then also I wear high heels. So could high heels contribute to what I'm going through? A little bit. You kind of hit the nail on the head, though. Uh, heredity and genetics definitely has a factor when it comes to bunion formation. Um, what we do for a living, though, and the shoe gear requirements that we have, mm -hmm. including football cleats, and I know a little bit about that. I played football for 20 years or so. They, those shoes can be kind of tight. Mm -hmm. You know. They're built for speed. Mm -hmm. Right? Not so that can push in on the toe too. The same thing that young ladies deal with as well. And they have this, you know, unique shoe gear requirements. High because heels, like, you know we gotta heels. have a six we gotta have a six inch stiletto. They try to they look good, but they pay the price. They do. They so do. the combination of those factors, right? The genetic factors and the uh, environmental factors like shoe gear mm -hmm. definitely play into bunion formation. Do you uh generally get couples? I know, or, you know, people coming in at the same time. Right? Yeah. No, uh, I prefer it. Um, oh. For a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, patients come in, um, sometimes they're a little scared or hesitant to give the full details of their history. Right. That would be me. Yeah. And then my wife would jump I'm in. On, doc, His you're not the terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, I can see that, yeah. So they provide me some information that, that really helps me help the patient better. Right. Additionally, if they have a surgical problem, um, they're going to be taking care of you at home, right? Because right. no matter what type of procedure you have, mm -hmm. there's going to be a little bit of downtime, right? Mm -hmm. I don't get to go home with you, unfortunately, right? So, Mr. Cribs is the one that's gonna take care of you at home. That's true. And he's that gonna wanna it, know what I got to sense. say and what to expect and everything from when the procedure. So we right. both receiving the information and we could tag team right. the recovery process. Right, exactly. And you know what, yeah. Dr. Dwayne, I talk about this. When we go to the doctor, we go to our primary care physician, you know, just yearly, but our feet, we use them every day. They're supposed yes. to last us for the rest That's of our life. To, and we yes. should be going. How often should we be going to a podiatrist to talk about our feet? Well, I think it depends on the person, right? Okay. So if they have a certain medical conditions like diabetes, for example, mm -hmm. um, they should be seeing a, a podiatrist at least every six months at minimum. A regular person, though, probably annually, just like, you know, your family doctor, um, especially if you have a history of injuries or you do unique activities like running or various athletic oh, yeah. events. The foot and ankle is the, the part of the, the body that is in constant contact with the earth. Yeah. No matter what, it, almost everybody has to use them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of force and, and a lot of variation out there. So um, it does make sense to prevent some problems before they turn into bigger problems. All right, well, no. let me show you what I'm working with, though. You want to you wanna see? Because I, yeah. I, I got a pedicure for you, got them lotioned up. I'm going to tilt you back a little oh, bit. Yeah, here. Uh oh, OK. Uh oh. All right. Yeah, get them dogs up there. But I will say this about my oh, bunions. Oh, oh, oh. They do not hurt. Hey, they look like they... They look like my mom was like, oh my God, your feet. Draw an outline on that, dog. Yeah, so, so there definitely is some bunion form, uh, uh, formation, right? Mm -hmm. There definitely. I mean, you can see that from here, right? Before I even put my hands on them. Um, but you also mentioned something very critical. They don't hurt you. They don't hurt you. They don't hurt me, right? I don't necessarily need to fix them per se if they're not causing you pain. However, I can make some recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. Based they're on real the shoe pointy gear. though in the sheets, Doc. I, I think it's more for the husband. Yeah. You said they're pointy in the sheets. I mean, maybe we need to talk privately. What separates, you know, this clinic? you know, from any other foot clinic. We do have some technology here that other places don't have, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. Some technology that allows us to visualize structures a little bit better um, and make better surgical decisions, especially in that surgical realm. But on top of that, then, we do have a very diverse faculty in terms of their education and training. Not everything needs surgically fixed, right? And we have people here that are very good at doing the non-surgical treatments for Whew, various foot and ankle ailments. Okay, hopefully that, that would be me. Hopefully surgery. I'll be in that category. Get her surgery, Doc. When, when it comes time for surgical Don't beat around the bush. Put me under. We also have the people that are, you know, the tip of the spear in innovation and research oh, and okay. um, experience. Another thing that's nice for us here is that we're not necessarily under the umbrella of any of the, the bigger corporations in the city. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're a person who you really want to have your surgery done at a Cleveland Clinic facility, for example, I can do it at, at a Cleveland Clinic facility. I can do it at a UH facility. I can do it pretty much now. anywhere. So I think, you know, that makes it a little bit better. This that gives does. people flexibility. Gives a level of comfort, too. Yeah. I'm like, I like you, dog. Now I you want did you to do it here. Right. Speaking of technology, I hear you have a machine here in Northeast Ohio that's like one of its kind. Yeah, we have a state-of-the-art weight-bearing CT scanner, mm -hmm. and it's the only one in Northeast Ohio. Oh, really? I might want to test that out. Do you mind? Absolutely. Oh, we're going to check that out. Look, don't you go anywhere. We'll get on the CT scanner. We'll be right back.